in this video we can discuss about the disinfectant here we will discuss the definition of disinfectant and antiseptic and classification of disinfectant and detailed mechanism of action of each disinfectant and their application before going to the classification we can discuss the definition of disinfection and disinfectant disinfection is defined as the process of destruction or removal of all the pathogenic microorganism on an inanimate or non living objects which are capable of producing infection but here bacterial spore may not be killed so this is a process which may not kill all the microorganism but they will reduce them to a level that is not harmful to the health so disinfectant are the substance which are applied to the non living object to destroy the microorganism that are living on the objects so if we are using disinfection with the cleaning action that process is known as sanitization now coming to the antisepsis and antiseptic antisepsis is defined as the process of destruction of microorganism on living tissue but not that bacterial spore in this not necessarily kill all the microorganism but it will reduce the level of microorganism which is not harmful to the health and antiseptics are the agents which are applied to the living tissue or skin to reduce the possibility of infection sepsis or putrefaction so while discussing disinfection we can just compare with the sterilization process so sterilization process is defined as a process by which an article surface or media is made free of all microorganism including vegetative and spore form in disinfection there is no killing of spore forming microorganism they will reduce the number of microorganism to a level which is no longer harmful to the human body or health but in case of sterilization process that will kill all the microorganism including the spore now asepsis asepsis is a technique by which the occurrence of infection into an and infected tissue is prevented now disinfectant may be either a site or statics this site and statics are a suffix which are used to express or to indicate the agent is used to destroy the microorganism or to uh, prevent the growth of microorganism so the suffix side indicate that the antimicrobial agent will kill or destroy certain group of microorganism for example viricides which will destroy or which will kill the viruses fungicide which will destroy or which will kill the fungus and bactericide which will destroy or kill the bacteria and suffix statics or stasis which means uh, to stand still which indicate that the agent will prevent the growth or multiplication of the type of organism but there is not necessary killing so example like bacteriostatic which indicate these are the agent which will prevent the growth of bacteria and fungistatic that will prevent the growth of fungi now let's discuss what are the ideal properties of an disinfectant an ideal disinfectant should have high potency under the condition of use it should be readily soluble and miscible with the water at effective concentration it should have no caustic with low degree of toxicity it should not have any deleterious effect on linen or metals it should be completely compatible with other antimicrobial agent along with it is used it should be compatible with other components of disinfectant formulation it should be stable on storage it should be reasonably cheap 
should not produce any offensive odor color or taste now coming to the classification of disinfectant chemically disinfectant is classified into phenols alcohols aldehyde dye surface active agents halogens metal guanidine or amidine furan derivative quinoline and isoquinoline derivative and acid now before going to each classification let me mention one thing in each class we have to write the mechanism of action of killing of bacteria by that disinfectant and different examples of disinfectant in that class and different pharmaceutical and microbiological applications of disinfectant in that class so we can discuss the first class that is the phenol now mechanism of action of phenol it will kill the bacteria or other microorganism by two different mechanism at low concentration they will disrupt the cytoplasmic membrane causing leakage of bacterial cellular constituents and also by precipitation of proteins and at high concentration it will kill the microorganism by protoplasmic poisoning or by denaturation of protein and inactivation of enzyme and this phenol disinfectant are usually obtained by distillation of coal tar between 170 to 270 degrees celsius and these are non selectively active against the vegetative form of bacteria but these are purely active against the spore forming bacteria and this is a widely used disinfectant in hospitals for cleaning as well as disinfection now coming to the different examples of phenols which are commonly used as an disinfectant first one is lysol which is mainly used for the cleaning in hospitals then crisol these are the methyl phenol soaps and which are used in hospital for disinfection of infected glass wares cleaning of floors and disinfection of excrete next one is chlorosilinol it is an important phenolic compound which contain in the dettol this is less toxic and less irritant and which are readily inactivated by organic matter so it cannot be used to uh, treat or disinfectant the uh, different culture of microorganism and next phenolic compound is hexachlorophenone which is used as an soap and detergent these are more active against the gram positive than the gram negative bacteria and these are bacteriostatic at high dilution and this can be applied on skin as prophylaxis against the staphylococcus infection and these are potentially toxic and should be used in care next one is chlorhexidine this is an another phenolic component which is bactericidal at high dilutions and used in burn wound and preoperative disinfection and used in mouthwash like rexidine and salvone then next component is exorisocinol which is used as an preservative in mouthwash and topical antiseptic and lozenges and dusting powders and cream and and other phenolic components are xylenol chlorophenol chloroxyphenol so that is all about the first group phenol now coming to the second group of disinfectant that is alcohol now mechanism of action of alcohol is by protein denaturation also how another true mechanism by disruption of tissue membrane and dissolution of several lipids thereby they will kill the growth of microorganism and the commonly used alcohol is ethyl alcohol or ethanol in this 60 to 90 percentage volume by volume in water solution of alcohol is used for their bactericidal activity 70 percentage is used for the disinfection of skin like in hand sanitizers and we have to note one thing the 100 percentage alcohol is ineffective as an disinfectant it has to be diluted up to 30 percentage for their bactericidal effect and the alcohol do not have especially ethylene do not have any 
action on spores now second example for alcohol is isopropyl alcohol these are great bactericidal than the ethanol and but these are twice toxic as that of ethanol 60 to 70 percentage isopropyl alcohol is used as an alternative to ethanol for pre-operative skin treatment and also used in preservative of cosmetics next example for alcohol is phenyl ethyl alcohol or also known as benzyl carpinol 0.5 percentage is used as a preservative for eye drops which have greater activity against gram negative organism and next one is benzyl alcohol 0.9 percentage is used as a preservative in injections or parenteral preparations now try ethylene and propylene glycol which is used as a solvent in bactericidal aerosols then chlorobutol 0.5 percentage is used as preservative in injections or eye drops pronopol or 2 bromo 2 nitropropane 1 3 diol 0 0.01 to 0.1 percentage has a broad spectrum of antibacterial activity including pseudomonas species so this is a second group of disinfectant alcohol coming to the third group of disinfectant that is aldehyde aldehyde will kill the different microorganism by combining with amino group of proteins and thereby it will cause denaturation of enzyme as well as protein and mainly used aldehydes are formaldehyde glutaraldehyde and phthaldehyde orthophthaldehyde now coming to the formaldehyde formaldehyde either can be used in the gaseous form or in aqueous solution Aqueous solutions are bactericidal, sporicidal and viricidal and these are mainly used to preserve the anatomical specimens and also for destroying of anthrax spores in air and wools. 10% percentage formalin containing uh, 0.5 sodium tetra bonate solution for, can be used to sterilize clean metal instrument, bacterial vaccine and also in preparation of toxoid from toxins. Now formaldehyde gas which can be liberated by heating or mixing the solid or liquid formaldehyde with k of or potassium permanganate and water. It is not very active below 20 degrees Celsius and it requires low humidity at least 70 percentage for the reaction. Formaldehyde gas can be used for the sterilization of instruments, heat sensitive catheters, fumigation ward sick room operation theaters and laboratories now coming to the second example of aldehyde that is glutaraldehyde which is effective against tubercle bacillus fungi and viruses these are less toxic and irritant to the skin and eye when compared with formaldehyde and this is mainly used to treat corrugated rubber anesthetic tubes face mask plastic endotracheal tubes, metal instruments and polythene tubings and orthothaldehyde another example for aldehyde this is a non-irritant and which required no activation process for their bactericidal effects and this is mainly used for the disinfections of endospores. Coming to the next group of disinfectant that is dye. Now mechanism of action of dye is different for each dye. For example, triphenyl methane dye which will be inactivate bacteria by reacting with acidic group of the cell. It will exhibit the bactericidal action of Staphylococcus aureus by inhibition of glutamine synthesis. An acridine dye will impair the function of cellular DNA and thus interfere with the reproduction of fungi. There are two group of dye which are used as a disinfection, aniline and acridine dyes. Both these are bacteriostatic, hot, high dilution and are low bacterial activity. First one is aniline dye. Examples are brilliant green, malicate green, crystal violet which is used on skin and mucous membrane as an antiseptic for some fungal infections like oral thrush. 
they are more active against gram negative organism they have no activity on tubercle bacillus hence the malicate green is used in lowest and jensen for their uh, differentiation media and these are non irritant non toxic and inhibited by the presence of organic material such as pus so it cannot be used as an disinfectant along with the organic materials now second group of dye is acridin examples are croflavin acriflavin euflavin aminacrin they are more active against gram positive organism than the gram negative organism they are affected little by the presence of organic matter so we can use for the disinfection in presence of organic matters like blood or pus bacteriostatic and they are used for treating of wound and irrigation of bladder and vagina now coming to the next group of disinfectant that is surface active agents mechanism of action of surface active agents like quaternary ammonium compounds are by its strong adsorption onto the negatively charged bacterial surface thereby they will damage the cell membrane it will still leads to the cytoplasmic leak cage of essential material from the cell it can also act by inactivating enzyme and denaturing of protein now different types of surface active agents are anionic cationic and non ionic surfactants so this is the mechanism of action of surface active agent it will disrupt the membrane structure thereby it will produce the leakage of essential material from the cell anionic surfactants have excellent detergents but have poor bactericidal activity second one is non ionic surfactant these also have no value in antibacterial property but these are used along with the bactericides which are not very soluble in water so by using the non ionic surfactant it will increases the solubility of other bactericidal components for that purpose only we can use the non ionic surfactant now coming to the cationic surfactants they are not very good detergents but they are very good bactericide agent which are effective in killing bacteria even at low concentration addition of polyphosphate salt may be made to improve their detergency the most satisfactory bactericides are quaternary ammonium compounds quaternary ammonium compounds are highly active against gram positive bacteria fungi and certain pathogenic protozoa which are used to control the microorganism on floor and wall which are used as an skin and antiseptic and as an sanitizing agent in dairy food egg fishing industry and brewing industry since these agents are strongly adsorbed onto the surface material such as glass wares plastic and fabrics may remain bactericidal after several years now examples of surfactant which are used as a disinfectant are sodium stearate citrimide or cetal trimethyl ammonium bromate benzalkonium chloride cetal pyridinium chloride sorbit and monoleate and domifin so these are examples of surface active agent now coming to next group of disinfectant that is halogen mechanism of action of allergen is this allergen compound will allogenate or oxidize the vital components and thereby they will interfere their functions and it will lead to the death of microorganism the most important halogens that are effectively employed as antimicrobial agents are iodine and chlorine let's discuss iodine first it's an wide spectrum disinfectant which is active against gram positive gram negative bacterial spores mycobacteria fungi virus amoebial infection the major active agent in iodine is elemental iodine that is in the form of i2 but this i2 is slightly soluble in water hence it is 
prepared in other form of solutions like glucose and iodine tinctures the glucose solutions are 5 percentage iodine in 10 percentage potassium iodide solution it is used as a skin disinfectant and also used for cold sterilization of surgical sutures now coming to iodine tincture it is 2.5 percentage iodine dissolved in 90 percentage ethanol and 2.5 percentage potassium iodide it is used for cleaning or disinfecting the skin and treating skin injuries the main disadvantages of iodine solutions are these are colored solution they will give stain and they are written so in order to avoid this problem iodine is formulated as iodophore iodophores are the complex that formed with the carrier molecules or complexing agent like polyvinyl pyrrolidone so this is available in market as povidone iodine solution ailment etc so from this iodophore the iodine will release slowly on demand now coming to the mechanism of action of iodine iodine will get combined with tyrosine which is an amino acid which is essentially present and is an integral common constituent of several enzyme and also it will combine with the many cellular proteins so that will iodinate and oxidize this vital cellular and different enzymes and that will lead to the death of a microorganism and thereby we can prevent the growth of microorganism now coming to the second allergen that is chlorine it is available in organic inorganic and gaseous form the germicidal action is due to the formation of hypochlorous acid when chlorine react with the water it will form hydrochloric acid and hypochlorous acid but this hypochlorous acid is further decomposed into the oxygen so uh, the oxygen released is a strong oxidizing agent which will act with the cellular constituents of the microorganism and the combination of chlorine with the proteins of cell membrane and enzyme also responsible for the death of microorganism and this chlorine is mainly used for the disinfectant of municipal water open wound athletic foods and other infections and another form of uh, chlorine is hypochlorites usually it is known as bleaching powder calcium hypochlorite is known as bleaching powder it is readily available as sodium potassium and calcium salt of hypochlorous acid this is an inexpensive and which is compatible with the most of the anionic and cationic surfactants then when this hypochlorite react with the water it will form hypochlorous acid and the mechanism of action is same as that of chlorine after forming the hypochlorous acid so the calcium hypochlorate is also known as bleaching powder it is used for sanitizing utensils in restaurants and sodium hypochlorite is used for the disinfectants of laboratory gloves linen sir syringes and reagent bottles and another form of halogen is chloroform it's a narrow spectrum disinfectant and there will be a marked reduction in the concentration due to the volatilization from the product which may result in the possibility of microbial growth after treating with chloroform so that is all about halogen now we can discuss the next group of disinfectant that is heavy metal mechanism of action of heavy metal is the metal like mercury silver copper will act by combining with the thiol group and acting as an protein precipitants most of the mercury compounds depend on very slight degree of ionization to yield toxic mercuric ion this ion may combine reversibly with sulfidryl group of protein and polypeptide in the substrate so it will prevent their utilization by the microorganism it's a weak disinfectant and which is active against the vegetative bacteria as well as fungi these are some example for heavy metal disinfectants mercury chloride it is used as an antiseptic for treating skin diseases copper as copper sulfate 
it is a potent inhibitor of algae which is used as an algicide and silver in the form of silver nitrate and silver sulfadiacin cream is used in the treatment of burn then merthiolate is used as a preservative for antitoxin sera then thiomerazol is used for used as a preservative phenyl mercuric acetate and phenyl mercuric nitrate also used as a preservative now coming to the next group of disinfectant that is guanidine and amidine mechanism of action guanidine will disrupt and destroy the cytoplasmic membrane function and amidine will inhibit amino acid transport linked with the phospholipid synthesis chlorhexidine and polyhexamethyl bicarbonates are example for guanidine and amidine type of disinfectants chlorhexidine is more active against gram positive organism these are ineffective at ambient temperature against bacterial spores and mycobacterium tuberculosis and but it is well tolerated and non toxic when applied to the skin or mucous membrane and it is important preoperative antiseptic coming to polyhexamethyl bicarbonates this is a broad spectrum disinfectant which is active against gram positive and gram negative bacteria and which have less toxicity now coming to next group of disinfectant that is furan derivatives example is nitrofurazone mechanism of action is by inhibition of hydrogen and electron transfer system and also by inhibition of cell wall synthesis and this nitrofurazan is used as an urinary antiseptic now coming to next group of disinfectant that is quinolonin and isoquinolonin derivative mechanism of action 8 hydroxy quinolonin with chelate with ion or copper to form toxic complexes which will oxidize the essential thiol group of different enzymes and proteins thereby it will interfere the growth of microorganism now examples are 8 hydroxy quinolin and diquilinium chloride now coming to next group of disinfectant that is acid and esters first one is benzoic acid it's usually available as sodium salt as when is sodium benzoate it is used as a preservative alone or in combination with other disinfectants but the disadvantage is development of resistant by some microorganism another acid disinfectant is sorbic acid it is used as an acid or its potassium salt but the activity decreases with increasing ph and ionization now another example for esters are sulfur dioxide sulfate and metal bisulfates ester used as preservative in food and beverage industry it have a dual role it will act both as preservative and antioxidant another example for esters which is used as a disinfectant is esters of para hydroxy benzoic acid it is also known as parabens the these are prepared to overcome the marked ph dependence on the activity of acid methyl parabens ethyl parabens propyl and butyl parabens are less readily ionized having pka value in uh, in the range of 8 to 8.5 and which is act as a good preservative now coming to next group of disinfectant that is oxidizing agent this will act by generating a highly destructive hydroxyl free radical which will attack the membrane lipids dna and essential membranes of microorganism thereby they will inhibit the growth the important examples of oxidizing agents are hydrogen peroxide and potassium permanganate hydrogen peroxide 3 percentage solution in water is used for cleaning wound with pus and removing pus from infected ears and this is stable and effective disinfection for inanimate surface 0.5 percentage solution is bactericidal and viricidal in 1 minutes and which is tubercular cidal in 5 minutes 
seven percentage hydrogen peroxide solution is sporicide. Now coming to potassium permanganate is also known as Zeitz bath in a dilution of one is to thousand ml. It is used for the treatment of urethritis. Now coming to next group of disinfectant ozone sterilization mechanism of action in this it will use oxygen which is subjected to an intense electric field and which will separate the oxygen molecules into atomic oxygen so this atomic oxygen will combine with the oxygen molecule to form ozone this ozone is used for the sterilization process and it is mainly used for the disinfection of water and food both the gases and liquid form is used in the treatment storage processing of food including meat poultry and egg it is also used for the disinfection of municipal sewages and water so that is all about the definition classification with examples mechanism of action and applications of disinfectants hope it is clear thank you for watching this video